What's up, Ryan? You know, cool cat might be the coolest cat in the world of the Looney Tunes. Want to know what's even cooler? Going to your local animal shelter today and picking up a cat <laughs> to bring home for the family. Consider it. Thank you. You know what? You're right. We shouldn't do a podcast about Looney Duels anymore. We should do, you know, like a more humanitarian podcast about animal welfare <laughs> and, and, and adopting, not shopping. Well, no, I think you're wrong, though. We do need to keep doing the Looney Tunes podcast. This is really important for, like, society. Oh, you're right. You're right. If, if... It's like, it's like <laughs> first place Looney Tunes, second place real animals. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Looney Duels. It's been a hot minute. It has been a hot minute. Life gets busy sometimes. And we have a very special episode for you today, right? Yeah, you know, um, this is just coming off his hit appearance in the cartoon Tiny Toons. Uh, the people demanded it, and we're here to appease the people. This, this is the Cool Cat special. This is the only, first and only time we will ever talk about Cool Cat. So it's all cards on the table right now. Uh, so... If you didn't know, this podcast is a podcast in which we take Looney Tunes characters and we um, pit them against each other in gladiatorial combat or in a Fortnite battle royale and just kind of see how they're going to do. You know, sometimes it's like sexy, sometimes it's scary. Uh, it really depends <laughs> on, the, on the mood. Um, but Cool Cat, if you didn't know, is the last kind of like classic Looney Tunes character. He was made at the end of the, of the run when they were running out of money. <laughs> yeah, so Cool Cat is part of a group of Looney Tunes. There's a few. There's more than Cool Cat, but Cool Cat's probably the most infamous. Um, there's, there's more of a story here that I, I'm not going to get the nitty gritty, but um, I, for reasons that I'm not quite sure, uh, the Looney Tunes people lost the ability to make Bugs Bunny cartoons, pretty much. Uh, and a few other iconic characters, I believe. So they were left with we were still getting Red Roder and Coyote. Uh, yes, thank yes, the Lord. Of um, there was still Daffy and Speedy who were paired up. Um, and a lot of those shorts are infamously bad. Um, and then there's <laughs> some made-up guys. We have made-up guys. No, they just made some new guys. Like Magic Mike or whatever. He's like a little mouse. And and the topic of today, a uh, Cool Cat. Yes, Cool Cat, who is a beatnik kind of tiger guy he's a bengal tiger i found out as, as i was watching this um mm -hmm. not too not too different from disney's sheer khan uh from jungle book any jungle book fans out there <laughs> maybe i'm like trying to avoid talking about cool cat as long as possible oh my god you hate him <laughs> i don't i don't hate cool cat okay so as we were getting ready to watch cool cat shorts because they're like oh it'd be fun if we did an episode where we just watched four cool cat shorts and shorts and talked about it i like sent in our discord group like oh you know who could recommend like the four best cool cat shorts and then before anybody could reply i decided to google some and realized he only has like five <laughs> in total yeah, I, or something <laughs> I, I, he has six i thought he had like 10 or something i was wrong he does not even have like 10 one of them is pretty racist also so we decided against that <laughs> yeah the, the 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 last cool cat short and the final original looney tune short um is infamously incredibly horribly racist so what a way to go out for both looney tunes and cool cat <laughs> so we just watched the first four i i think cool cat shorts so that we can kind of get an idea for this guy what his what his you know, vibe is what is his side characters in the Cool Cat shorts. So you know, let's let's just hit it off, okay? We got this first short. It's just called Cool Cat, and the first thing we have to note about Cool Cat is he does have his own theme song. <laughs> How does it go? I don't remember. <laughs> I should have like. We should have Cool like... Cat. He's the coolest cat. I forgot how. Should have put it like on my iPod before we started this. Like pulled it up on my iPod Nano from 2006 and started playing it. Here it is. This is it. <laughs> cool cat. Now, I didn't think this was clear, folks. An instrumental of this song plays throughout 90% of these shorts. It's like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's really fucking annoying. <laughs> so Cool Cat, he lives 
I guess in India, I have to assume, given he's a Bengal tiger, and there his main antagonist, his Elmer Fudd, if you will, is a is a character called Colonel Rimfire, who is a <laughs> I need to make something clear. Don't believe the box. These aren't cool cat shorts. These are fucking Colonel Rimfire short. He he is eighty <laughs> percent of these when you watch them. Yeah, his whole thing is he's like a you know like a British explorer type like hunter type, and he's all like tally ho, you know, off to kill cool cat. He's you know a little stupid, I guess, which is I guess the joke of it. He rides around in this robotic pink elephant, and for this first short. You know, he gets separated from the elephant and Cool Cat thinks that the elephant is real and treats it like a real elephant and is like really nice to it. So I think if we're going to talk about stats off the bat, Cool Cat, if he sees you walking down the street and you look a little peckish or thirsty, he's going to be like, hey, man, can I buy you like a soda or something? Want to go down to the water? Well, he's in the jungle or whatever. So he'd be like, want to go down to the watering hole, get a sip? And he would like show you where it was and he'd hold your hand the entire time. Isn't Uh, that nice? So he's a support character. Yeah, Cool Cat is kind of a support character, I think. Can I talk about Cool Cat just like as a character real quick? Sure. It's your podcast. Do whatever you (laughs) want. I think he might suck a bit um oh my god immediately well because here's the problem he's like very passive and like a lot of the fun of like looney tunes is when they're very reactive to things like bugs Bunny's a bit passive but he like plays right like he plays with elmer fudd he plays with yosemite sam like he's like he's like always on top but he's playing with them still cool cat is very passive he's very indifferent he like doesn't engage with with colonel pinstripe or whatever um like rimfire rimfire yeah whatever iconic character um so there's no like dynamic between them and like most of these shorts are supposed to be the dynamic between them but like there's no dynamic there because they, they're, there's like no relationship there really to them like there's no interesting things you can do with them they're, all these shorts are just cool cat like uh oh here i go daddy oh the colonel <laughs> and then barely interact but like he's awesome though (laughs) he's kind of gay that doesn't change the fact that his shorts kind of suck yeah but like cool cat the guy he's a cool guy right like he's pretty strong and powerful he's not as cool as bugs bunny it doesn't uh, bugs bunny you were like trying to compare cool cat to like a god or like a demigod that's not fair you have to compare cool cat to like a lesser Looney Tune. So like I, have, I, I have to put him on shit level to make him seem cool. No, it's just if you listen, if you compare literally any Looney Tune to Bugs Bunny, okay, they okay. all suck. Cool That's Cat, what I'm saying. Cool Cat's not as cool as Speedy Gonzalez either. Okay, but Speedy Gonzalez is awesome. So <laughs> he's not as cool as Granny. He's not as cool as Granny. I think he's pretty cool. He's not as he's cool. About, I, th- I think he's about Granny cool. I think he's about Porky Pig cool. For being generous. Wow. You're being really mean to Porky Pig right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean to Porky Pig. <laughs> I don't care about this this first short because it, it all it does is kind of briefly establish the dynamic of Colonel Rimfire is here. He wants to kill Cool Cat. Cool Cat it's like whatever about it. And then he also Rimfire has an elephant. The elephant is important lore for later though. Um, I actually this is gonna be pretty rapid fire here. Um, first of all, Cool Cat wins the short. Second of all, um. The second short that we watched, Big Game Haunt, I like need to talk about it like on a conceptual level. Oh, that's the ghost one. <laughs> yeah. So imagine like, you know, they just come out with a, a Looney Tune short, a new Looney Tune, and it's like, okay, here is the main character and his like dynamic with with the you know his his equal or whatever. They're you know playing cat and mouse, whatever. Then it's like, okay, let's get another short in here to kind of ease us into another kind of you know revisiting of that you know have colonel rimfire and cool cat fighting maybe just in a a different way or different area no they just like immediately go we need to introduce a third character (laughs) like right now his name is spooky and he's a ghost (laughs) spooky is is like you think of like a lame cartoon ghost character in your head like casper the friendly ghost is like shitty brother characters it's him it's it's like she just like, oh, jeez, man, I'm, I'm the ghost guy. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I hope I don't scare him. The short is just the stupid ghost guy going, hey, guys. And then Cool Cat and Rimshot McFire guy, 
they should run around. They again, they don't interact with anyone. Like, there's no dialogue to this. Like there's no like back and forth. Like there's not like any like like re remixes on the idea. The ghost just appears and they goes, "Hey guys!" And they go, "Yo, whoa!" <laughs> and they run away. Yeah, they they're in a house for some reason, like a haunted house, and like Rimfire runs into the ghost. He gets really scared. Cool Cat, who I'm really surprised by his reaction to the ghost, because I thought Cool Cat was, like, cool, right? Like, yeah. he has, nothing bothers him. You know, he's got friends in, of all sorts of shapes and sizes. Like, Cool Cat is, like, the one Looney Tune I could see, like, immediately seeing a ghost and being like, hey, what's up, man? Like, how's it hanging? <laughs> you know, like, being really cool about it. But he doesn't. He's not cool about it. He runs away and screams, and then the entire short... It's just Colonel Rimfire and Cool Cat, like, running away from this ghost who's just kind of, like, walking around. <laughs> I thought the concept would be Cool Cat befriends the ghost early in the short, and then they would, like, team up to mess with, with Colonel Dickshot. That's not what happens. They both are scared of the ghost. They both react the same to the ghost. They both... You could swap, like, Cool Cat and Colonel Dickfuck, like, they're, the jokes they are, like they give in this one, and it'd be the same short. Yeah, I I would say so. But what does this mean for their power level? Uh, I don't know. They're both pussies afraid of ghosts. Yeah, but you know, even Bugs Bunny's a little bit scared of the supernatural. Okay, but what else does Cool Cat have to him? Um, <laughs> uh, he uh, <laughs> he's got a necktie and hat. Bugs Bunny could just put that on whenever he wants. Yeah, but Cool Cat always has it on. That's how okay, you know how cool he is. Let's get one thing out of the way. Colonel Rimfire's below Elmer Fudd. Yeah, I think. You said while we were watching it that Colonel Rimfire is a worse Yosemite Sam. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but like when I was watching him, I just been thinking like I, I just kind of want Yosemite Sam back. Like I just wish he was here trying to shoot Cool Cat instead. Because like I don't know, he reacts like more funny to things like it. Like he gets angrier. Colonel Rimfire is just says kind of like, oh, blast it, I'll try again. Whereas like Yosemite Sam, it's like, oh, I'm so, I'm so mad. I think that Yosemite Sam is probably a better shot than Colonel Rimfire too. Which, Colonel if we're talking... Rimfire's ass <laughs> at shooting. <laughs> That's the thing. If we're going to talk about like raw statistics here, raw power for Colonel Rimfire, like his one main asset aside from his elephant is his like big gun. And he's not great at shooting it, but that's not entirely unique to him as a Looney Tune. A lot of Looney Tunes characters like fire their big gun and miss a lot but he's i feel like especially bad <laughs> even like elmer fudd has landed some hits on daffy duck i mean like right what has colonel dip, dip shit done you guys you gotta start calling him by his god-given name it's rim fire <laughs> get oh, it oh, right yeah i'm sorry hey all all two generous all one colonel rim fire fan in the world <laughs> i'm sorry so they both, I think they, this ends with them just like running away until they run out of the house together. Like they actually start teaming up Colonel Rimfire and Cool Cat to get out of the house as soon as possible, which is kind of just like, okay, I guess they're on a team now and that's all right. I barely know these guys. <laughs> it's, it, they're trying to do like a shake up on a dynamic that doesn't exist. This that's really, what I mean. Like this conceptually is, this short is weird. This is like the eighth short you do. Right, like it's like, oh, you, you, you know, Cool Cat, you know, Rimfire, you know how they're always getting on each other. But what if there was a short where they had to like team up against a third guy, and they do that for the second short ever? For I, them? I, I remember this one ends actually. Cool Cat just gets tired and sits on the bench, and the ghost is like, "Hey guys," and then he's like, "Ah, oh, geez, Louise," and then it just kind of ends. So who wins? Does Spooky the ghost win? I don't even know. <laughs> is this the first care. ever win for? For Spooky the Ghost. Yeah, whatever. Marcus Spooky the Ghost went down. <laughs> yeah! Okay, well, now that he's on the playing field, we gotta talk about Spooky the Ghost. So, as a ghost, he cannot be touched. How does he just not win automatically, like, every single matchup ever? Spooky the Ghost, but if a Looney Tune didn't matter, they would figure it out. <laughs> Bugs Bunny would, like, pull an eraser out and erase him of existence or something. Oh my god. I, I think Spooky the Ghost could you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with with some of the Looney Tunes, I think. think so? Which ones? Um, <laughs> so, probably he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sylvester. I bet Sylvester would be scared of him. Sylvester, huh? Sylvester the cat. Yes, that's a Looney Tune. What do you mean? He could I go just... against Sylvester. Funny to be, oh, he can go against Sylvester. Yeah, Sylvester sucks, so, all, you know. All he can do <laughs> is fucking Sylvester. 
if he goes up against Sylvester, Sylvester will be like, yipe! And he'd, like, run away. Be scared Daffy of him. Daffy Duck would think this guy's a fucker. Well, yeah, but Daffy Duck's not scared of ghosts. I think Porky Pig would think this ghost is a bitch. Yeah, but not Sylvester's. <laughs> well, Sylvester we've established is the biggest pussy haha in Looney Tunes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I mean, maybe, like, Barnyard Dog and Foghorn. Like, I'm envisioning a short where, like, Barnyard Dog and Foghorn are, like, up late at night pulling pranks on each other, and they, like, see a ghostly presence in the farmhouse, and they're like, oh, and they try and, like, goad each other into going to check it out, and then they eventually do, and it's, like, Spooky the Ghost, but he... I think you're... Can you, le- no, I think Can you let me finish? Can you let me finish? <laughs> hey, finish your Spooky the Ghost fan fiction. I want to see an episode where they go in the the thing and, and Spooky the Ghost, through some hilarious, clumsy antics, has made himself appear a lot scarier than he is. But okay. he just wants to make friends. So, like, he keeps showing up and, like, every t- where he turns to go, like, talk to Foghorn or Barnyard Dog, they're, like, screaming and running away. But they're also trying to get, like each other in the ghost's way, you know? They're, like, trying to antagonize each other at the same time. So it's funny. I do like that you had to make him scarier. Well, no, I mean, like, that would be the... That's the funny part about it, is, like, he's, like, made himself look scarier, and it's, like, funny to see Foghorn and Barnyard, like, freak out over a ghost that the audience knows is just a little pipsqueak Casper wannabe bitch. Hey, I know? have big news about Spooky the Ghost. I went on Google just, like, see, like, if anyone's a <laughs> fan of him, and I learned something else instead. What? Apparently he was supposed to star... In his own shorts, and they scrapped that. <laughs> what a loser! So they 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 really did want it, like because at the beginning of this short, Big Game Haunt, it says, "And introducing Spooky the Ghost." <laughs> so they were gonna have him be his own thing. His only other appearance in Looney Tunes media is he appears in one episode of Weedy Mysteries. He does well. We gotta watch and you that. You know, you know who's getting scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Sylvester. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was to, right. I, to, I was right. I need to send you like the, the, the fucking starter image for this episode. Hold on. And I didn't even know that was a thing. That was just off the top of my head. Oh my god. I'm so good at this. <laughs> you need to put this on screen. Unfucking believable. <laughs> oh my god. I that's so fucking funny. I swear to God and Jesus above. I did not <laughs> No, that this was an episode of Tweety's Birds Mystery Book or whatever. I just thought that Sylvester naturally would be the Looney Tunes scared by ghosts the most. This is so good. Unfucking believable. I'm untouchable, baby. I know these guys better than anybody. <laughs> uh, so Hippie Drum Tiger is the next one we watched, where I first learned that the elephant's name is Ella, the pink robot ele- elephant. Yeah, now, she's, in the first sh- she's like sentient in this one now, right? Yeah, so in the first short, she's like literally just a robot. Like if if the guy, if Rimfire's not on her, she's not alive. But in this one, she's like almost like an AI. Like she's got sentience. And then she like almost dies at one point and it like really scared me because it was kind of horrifying and I like her. Um, I think Ella is more powerful than Rimfire and Cool Cat combined. Well, no question. And she's got an armored body, and she's got, like, a computer in her brain. So, she's pretty cool. What even happens in this one? What's this one about? Is this the this circus is the, one? No, this is the one where they go to France. Oh, this is the stupid, like, they're, <laughs> Rimfire is trying to find Cool Cat, but Cool Cat's gone off to Paris to, like, be in a race or something. And so he goes all the way to Paris, and you see, like, one little background shot of, like, the Eiffel Tower or whatever. And then the for the rest of the short, it's just, like, repeating forest background, like, on loop. <laughs> they go out of their way to bring these motherfuckers to Paris, and they do nothing with the setting. Like, it's like, 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 uh-oh, he's going up the Eiffel Tower, or they're going into, like, the croissant store, and they're gonna get croissant adventures or something. There's nothing. There's no, like, <laughs> there's no, like, wonderfully stereotypical French characters in this one. It's awful. <laughs> They've let me down so much. Let me think here. In this short, Cool Cat drives, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm imagining in our big battleground, we'll probably have some vehicles around. I think Cool Cat would be one of the more competent drivers. You can run some Looney Tunes over, right? Uh, I don't know. I guess so. I just feel like the cars aren't going to affect the Looney Tunes that much. Speedy Gonzalez can outrun the car. 
Roadrunner could outrun the car. I feel like Coyote keeps up with Roadrunner pretty well, so he can probably outrun the car. I feel like most Looney Tubes can outrun cars. Okay, so it's just use a useless skill for him to have. Yeah, I mean, maybe if he was driving a big scary car, it'd be one thing, but he's just driving like a little like a little cart. Like a racing cart. He can like maybe hit Elmer Fudd a few times with it. <laughs> And probably do something to him. I'm trying to get Cool Cat. This is the only time we're going to talk about him. I have to figure out all his, even if they're little, little bits that we can add to his his profile to find out what what he's all about. You know. Well, did you do you remember anything any, anything from this short in particular? <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, ooh, um. Ella wins the race, <laughs> and Cool Cat congratulates her. Um, he's very cordial. He's a very, he's not a sore loser, Cool Cat. So if Cool Cat died in the, in the Looney Tunes battle, I think he'd be very nice about it. Uh, can you imagine Cool Cat dying? He's got like his chest open and he's everywhere. Oh my God, why do you want to imagine uh, that? He's like, oh, dog. Oh, cat, I'm dying, dog. Ah, uh, here I go to the afterlife. <laughs> You want to talk about three ring wing Wait, ding? no, come on. There's got to be something in the short where they go to France. I, di- I wrote... I was the... Okay. Hey, guess what, everybody? I was the only one who wrote notes for these shorts. <laughs> Ryan did it. Ryan is going off pure memory. Oh, pretty well. You don't remember anything? No, they, they just... They drive in fields. Um, who can, he just doesn't do anything. <laughs> who kind of doesn't like have crazy powers or jump up and down he's not wacky he's not silly he's not funny he just drives this stupid little car and goes ah oh, man here comes mr 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 pin 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 and then uh the, i'm gonna and he's in my car with ellie the elephant look out that's all he does but isn't that in its own way a power of some sort no <laughs> <laughs> why not what power is it being cool, being too cool to care. Okay, well, it's not gonna matter if he's too cool to care when fucking Chicken Hawk Henry is told he's a chicken and drags him <laughs> to the kitchen. <laughs> but then Cool Cat would just be like, hey, whatever, man. And then Henry would pick up on his vibe and let him go. I don't think that's true. <laughs> you don't think that's true? I don't think Henry gives a shit about vibes. <laughs> you don't think Henry could see a, a really cool cat and just like go, you know what? This guy's all right. Okay, <laughs> fine. You know, maybe, maybe Henry Chickenhawk could do that. What's, what if when, when Taz the Tasmanian Tiger <laughs> comes up to Cool Cat to shred him to pieces and shove him in his mouth for dinner, um, do you think the vibes are going to save him? <laughs> well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> because I feel like Taz is, you know, he's an animal. He's kind of dumb. I think he's very easily influenced by vibes. I don't think, <laughs> I think he cares he... about vibes. I think he's just going to think... <laughs> Who that's like, hey, daddy O, and then Taz will pick him up and shove him in his mouth. But we sh- we've been shown in these shorts that Cool Cat is one with nature, and he has a way with animals. You think that matters when he's going to leave his domain? When he enters the world of insane Looney Tunes animals and not normal cartoon animals, then it's over for him. <laughs> three wing, three ring, three, three. Three ring wing ding is the last cool cat short we watched. <laughs> it's a circus episode. Yippee. Um, this is when I finally realized that Colonel Rimfire's catchphrase was tally ho. Um, and one. I hate it. <laughs> I really don't like it. I hate him. Now, here's where every the game fucking changes though. Does it? I I, th- I think that we're too, you know narrow-minded here when looking at Colonel Rimfire and, and thinking only about his bounty on Cool Cat's head. There's a shot at the beginning of this short of Colonel Rimfire in his, like, study, and he's got, like, a shit ton of animal heads on his wall. Like, he has killed before, pretty successfully. Like, he's got, like, elephants and stuff on there. Do, do, do we have evidence he didn't just, like, buy them? Well, no, but as we can see by how persistent he is with Cool Cat, I highly doubt that if he was the type to buy it, that he would be chasing Cool Cat still. Like, if he was the type who didn't care about that sort of thing, like his pride or whatever, well, no, maybe it's like, he just wanted to buy a Bengal tiger head, what, what does it have to do with Cool Cat? He, like, goes to the club, right? Like, like <laughs> the, the country club. Like, oh, I thought you meant like the dance club. No, if you think this guy goes to the dance club? He's not fucking cool enough to do that. He goes to a country club, and he's like, "Shit, you're gonna, you're gonna my animals and cut sports." And then all the other, 
hunting Looney Tunes cartoon characters like, Sport, we know you bought those from the market. Uh, come back when you've got a real animal you've caught. And now he's just trying to catch like a real tiger to prove something, but he's never actually caught an animal before. And you got onto me about writing fan fiction earlier. This is straight up. This is straight up fan fiction about Colonel Rimfire. Okay, hey, whatever. How do you know that happened, huh? Uh, I, I can... <laughs> vibes, Lube. The power of vibes. <laughs> I think this episode is tearing us apart. <laughs> I think Cool Cat broke us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we're never watching this freak ever again. I don't even. I know it's a circus episode. I wrote this down in my notes. Cool Cat's never been to the circus before. I don't know how that's possible. But he goes and he starts fucking around and and uh, oh yeah, I remember now. Colonel Rimfire wants to turn in Cool Cat because the circus wants a tiger and they're gonna give him a cash reward. And the way the this the this short ends after shenanigans is Cool Cat's like, oh, you want me to like stay here and we get money? That's fine. Like let's just split the money. <laughs> we'll be fine. And of course he takes a little bit more off the top, but you know, that's just how Cool Cat rolls. He's gotta he's gotta support his lifestyle, his bohemian lifestyle. Do you think this is, this is like the canonical end? I mean it's gotta be. Like I I know there's two other shorts we didn't watch, yeah. but so that's like uh, this is the real ending. Yeah, this is the real ending where you know, they kind of go their separate ways. You know, Colonel Rimfire gets a little money. Cool Cat gets a stable home and some, you know, income as well. And they just, you know, decide that they're better off going going in different directions. Okay. And that's very mature of them. You know, out of all the Looney Tunes, these are probably the most mature ones. Probably because they're so boring, so. Oh my god. <laughs> I want you to say one nice thing about both of them. Um, Cool Cat's design is all right. Okay. Now the other one. You really kind of have to make work for this one. I don't like anything about him. I think his design sucks. I think his jokes suck. I think his catchphrase sucks. I think he sucks. What about his elephant? Do you like his elephant? No, it's not about him, though. It doesn't count. Because Ellie is now, like, a separate character now that we know that she's, like, she, like, can think for herself. Like, I don't think it matters anymore. But he could have... He made... He probably made her. All right, sure. He hypothetically made a Looney Tunes character I think is... All right. <laughs> Yay, we did it. We we got to all the all the the perks, all the the good stuff about these guys. They yeah, I no, don't know. They have no fucking <laughs> powers. They have nothing. Colonel D, Colonel D, DB Doobie has like a gun. That's it. And like every Looney Tune has a gun. He's not special. Should we read some comments? <laughs> yeah, let's, I, I I hope they're not about Cool Cat. I just want to say also real quick before we get to questions, I can confirm now the Tiny Tunes episode I watched is the best piece of cool cat media I've seen. <laughs> All right, from TV Voltage, do the Tiny Toons get a buff for being kids playing Fortnite against a bunch of adults? Do they have more experience and thus have studied the meta and strategies to win a battle royale? Also, could they sandbag and hide for a bit while the adults off each other? I'm sure the adults tunes don't see the Tiny Toons as a threat and thus won't prioritize them. So lots, of, much, much to think of here. So at first it's asking here, Obviously, the adults will have more experience and will kind of, I think, also know the other tunes better. I think that most of the tunes are familiar with each other. They go to reunions all the time. You know, they're doing brunch every other weekend. Uh, so they, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses, which might be a bonus for the Tiny Tunes because the Looney Tunes don't know the Tiny Tunes' strengths and weaknesses as well. I think it's advantage for also... Cool Cat, too. It probably is also an advantage for Cool Cat because nobody gives a shit about Cool Cat. So nobody knows about him. So he can kind of like almost lie about what he can do or maybe hype himself up or just kind of be mysterious. So everyone's like, I wonder what Cool Cat's power is, even though he doesn't have one. He can kind of like scare off the lesser Looney Tunes that way and like not let them bother him. But yeah, I think I think the Tiny Tunes would probably do a lot of like observing because they're, you know, hesitant to throw themselves into the battle. They, you know, they're still learning. They kind of want to scope things out, see how it's going to go. And then maybe they'll, you know, start to find their own, you know. Because that's the whole thing about Tiny Toons is they have to, you know, you know, learn about themselves and learn what, what their shtick is. And if we're talking like freshman year Tiny Toons, it's going to be really hard for them out there. But we're talking like senior year over here then this is when they've actually studied and honed their craft, and now they just get to go wild, you know? And the, the older Looney Tunes are not going to know what's going to hit them, because they don't know anything about the Tiny Tunes. 
they're new they're fresh new faces okay yeah yeah all so right. i guess i guess it could go either way all right i i agree that was kind of the only comment that's all right well thanks everybody for listening feel free to leave some more comments please 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 ask solely cool cat questions so that, oh, uh, you can ask about anything you want so that so that ryan will get very mad next time we have to read comments hate him <laughs> um tell me about your cool cat fan fiction <laughs> i want to hear it all what makes him so cool i must know it's got to be the voice and the hat and his stride and his way that he doesn't care like about the world. to him or something? <laughs> no. No, no. Anyway, good night and farewell, everybody. Until next time, that's all, folks. Bye. Bye.